Eighth grade, unit five, lesson three, equations for functions. Problem number one, here is an equation that represents a function. 72x plus 12y equals 60. Select all the different equations that describe the same function. A, let's look at the term on the right side of the equal sign, it's 600. And compared to the original equation, that term used to be 60. So it's actually 10 times bigger than it used to be. Look at the y term. It went from 12y times 10 and became 120y. And now let's look at the x term. It went from 72x to 720x. It was multiplied by 10. So all three terms were multiplied by 10. Another important thing that I noticed is all the terms that were on the left side of the equal sign remained on the left side of the equal sign and all the terms that were on the right side of the equal sign remained on the right side of the equal sign. This next equation will tell us why that's important. Let's look at this term y to the left of the equal sign. There's one y, but in the original equation, there used to be 12 y. 12 y divided by 12 equals one y. Now let's look at the term with the x. It's moved from one side of the equal sign to the other side of the equal sign. So not only did the 72x get 12 times smaller by being divided by 12, but they subtracted it from both sides of the equal sign. So 72x divided by 12 equals 6x. But if we move it to the other side of the equal sign, it's because we subtracted that 6x from both sides. So if we're subtracting 6x on the right-hand side, we'd have negative 6x, and it would be canceled out from the left-hand side. The only term left is 60, and it turned into 5, because 60 divided by 12 equals 5. And 60 is still on the right-hand side of the equal sign, and the 5 is on the right-hand side of the equal sign. So this equation follows the same function as the original equation. C. Let's look at the term on the right side of the equal sign. It went from a 60 to a 10. That means it was divided by 6 or got 6 times smaller. 60 divided by 6 is 10. Now let's go to the other side of the equal sign. We see a 12y. 12y divided by 6 is 2y. And then finally, also on the left-hand side of the equal sign, is a 72x. Let's divide that by 6 and we get 12x. The equation for C also shares the same function as the original equation. D. Y equals 5 plus 6X. Let's look at the Y term on the left-hand side of the equal sign. It started out as a 12Y and then became a 1Y. So that's 12 times smaller. So 12Y divided by 12 equals 1Y. Now let's look at the X term. The X term actually went from the left-hand side of the equation to the right-hand side of the equation. 72x divided by 12 equals 6x. However, if we were to subtract 6 from both sides, it would end up as a negative 6x on the right-hand side of the equal sign. D says it's a positive 6x, but it should be a negative 6x. So D does not follow the same function as the original equation. E. Let's look at the x term in the original equation. It started out as a 72x and then became a 1x. So it was obviously divided by 72. Let's look at the 60 in the original equation. It started as a 60, then was divided by 72 and became 5 sixths. And 60 over 72 is equivalent to 5 over 6. So there's one term left. That's the term with a y in it. It starts out on the left side of the equal sign and then ends up on the right side of the equal sign. So let's see if 12y divided by 72, then subtracted from both sides of the equal sign, is indeed negative y over six. Let's find out. We can subtract 12y divided by 72 from both sides. It gets canceled out from the left side and this is what's left on the right side. Negative 12y divided by 72 is the same as negative 12y over 72. 12 goes into negative 12 evenly and 12 goes into 72 evenly. So we can divide the top and the bottom by 12. Negative 12y divided by 12 is y and 72 divided by 12 is 6. 
So E does follow the same function as the original equation. F. Let's look at the term on the right side of the original equation. 60. 60 becomes a 6. 60 divided by 10 equals 6. So let's see if the other terms are also 10 times smaller. 72x divided by 10 does not equal 7x. And 12y divided by 10 does not equal 2y. So the equation for f does not follow the same function as the original equation. g. 1x equals 5 over 6 plus y over 6. 72x in the original equation divided by 72 equals 1x. Let's divide 60 by 72. 60 over 72 represents 60 divided by 2. 12 goes into 60 evenly and 12 goes into 72 evenly. 60 divided by 12 is 5 and 72 divided by 12 is 6. 60 divided by 72 is equivalent to 5 over 6. Let's look at the term with a y in it. 12y. It was subtracted from both sides so it should be a negative on the right hand side of the equal sign. But when we look at g, it's written as a positive. Equation g does not represent the function of the original equation. Problem number two from eighth grade unit four lesson 13. A. Graph a system of linear equations with no solutions. This means I need to graph two lines that have the same slope but different y-intercepts. The y-intercept for this line is 3, and the y-intercept for the next line is 6. They have the same slope and different y-intercepts. B. Write an equation for each line you graph. I can start out the equations for both of these lines with y equals. Next, we need to figure out what the slope is. The rise is up 1, and the run is to the right 1. A slope of 1 over 1 is the same as a slope of 1. For both equations, this middle term will be 1 over 1 times m, or 1 times m. Now we need to find the last term for each of these equations. This is where the equations will be different. For the blue line, the y-intercept is 3, so the equation reads y equals 1m plus 3. For the purple line, the y-intercept is 6. So the equation reads y equals 1m plus 6. You can rewrite these equations as y equals m plus 3 and y equals m plus 6. Problem number 3. Brown rice costs $2 per pound and beans cost $1.60 per pound. Lynn has $10 to spend on these items to make a large meal of beans and rice for a potluck dinner. Let B be the number of pounds of beans Lynn buys and R be the number of pounds of rice she buys when she spends all her money on this meal. A. Write an equation relating the two variables. Rice at $2 per pound can be expressed as 2R and beans at $1.60 per pound can be expressed as 1.6B. So the equation would read 2r plus 1.6b equals 10. b. Rearrange the equation so b is the independent variable. To get the r by itself, we have to divide every term by 2. 2r divided by 2 is 1r. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now we can divide the independent variable by 2. 1.6b divided by 2 equals 0.8b. Since we need the independent variable on the other side of the equal sign, we have to subtract 0.8b from both sides. Now the equation reads r equals 5 minus 0.8b. C. Rearrange the equation so r is the independent variable. Let's start with the original equation, 2r plus 1.6b equals 10. Now we want r as the independent variable. Let's get the r on the other side of the equal sign by subtracting 2r from both sides. 2r minus 2r cancels each other out. Next, let's get the b by itself so that it's just 1b, and we'll do that by dividing both sides 
by 1.6. Every term needs to be divided by 1.6. 1.6 B divided by 1.6 equals B. 10 divided by 1.6 equals 6.25. And negative 2 R divided by 1.6 equals negative 1.25 R. That leaves us with the equation B equals 6.25 minus 1.25 R. Problem number four from eighth grade unit four, lesson six. Solve each equation and check your answer. A, use the distributive property to multiply four times three, that's 12, and four times a negative two X, that's negative eight X. Bring down the two X and combine like terms. 2x minus 8x is negative 6x. Now you have 12 minus 6x on the left side of the equal sign. And on the right side of the equal sign, use the distributive property to multiply 3 times 2x, that's 6x, and 3 times a positive 2, that's a positive 6. And that's over 6, so we have to divide both those terms by 6. 6x divided by 6 is 1x, or x, and 6 divided by 6 is 1. Combine like terms, and 1 plus 4 is 5. Let's add 6x to both sides. Negative 6x plus 6x cancels each other out, and x plus 6x equals 7x, because that's like 1x plus 6x. To get the 7x by itself, let's subtract 5 from both sides. 5 minus 5 cancels each other out, and 12 minus 5 equals 7. To make the x just 1x, we have to divide both sides by 7. 7x divided by 7 is x, and 7 divided by 7 is 1. x equals 1. To check your answer, substitute a 1 in place of all of the x's. b. 4z plus 5 equals negative 3z minus 8. Add 3z to both sides. Negative 3z plus 3z cancels each other out, and 4z plus 3z equals 7z. Subtract 5 from both sides of the equal sign. 5 minus 5 cancels each other out, and negative 8 plus a negative 5 equals a negative 13. Let's make the z just 1z by dividing both sides by 7. 7z divided by 7 equals 1z, and negative 13 divided by 7 equals negative 13 sevenths. Z equals negative 13 sevenths. You can check your answer by substituting the Z with a negative 13 sevenths. C. Let's look at this term on the right. Q minus 1 over 4. That's the same as Q over 4 minus 1 over 4. Since we're subtracting fractions, let's make a common denominator of 8. So for the first term, we need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 4. So 1 half becomes 4 eighths. We need to multiply the numerator and the denominator times 2. So 4 becomes 8 and Q becomes 2Q. And for this last term on the right, we need to multiply the numerator and denominator by 2. So the 4 becomes an 8 and the 1 becomes a 2. Let's collect the Q's just on one side of the equal sign. And we can do this by adding 1 8 Q to both sides. Negative 1 8 Q plus 1 8 Q cancels each other out. And 2 Q over 8 plus 1 Q over 8 equals 3 Q over 8. To get the term with the Q in it by itself, we have to add 2 8 to both sides. Negative 2 8 plus 2 8 cancels each other out. And 4 8 plus 2 8 equals 6 8. To make the Q just 1 Q, we have to multiply by the reciprocal of 3 eighths. So we have to multiply both sides by 8 thirds. 3 eighths Q times 8 thirds equals 1 Q, and 8 thirds times 6 eighths equals 48 twenty fourths, which is equal to 2. So Q equals 2. You can check your answer by substituting the Q with the 2. Help me disrupt YouTube's algorithm by liking this video, commenting on this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks. I appreciate it.